The Rijentech Ophion, a stunning little ITX PC case that has a premium look and feel about it. The question is, for a compact case such as this, does it perform well on the inside? What will the temperatures be like? Today, we'll find out. So welcome to part two of this review on the Rajantech Ophion. In part one, we looked at the case in depth and built into it. If you haven't seen that video, you can click on the link above to check it out. But in today's video, we'll be doing a thermal test on a variety of different fan configurations and see what the temps are like whilst playing a few PC games. But before we begin, make sure you've subscribed if you haven't already. Turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And all the products featured in this review will be linked down below. In the comments from part one of this review, a few of you guys suggested I swap the Western Digital 2.5 inch hard drive with the Samsung Evo SSD to keep the color theme of the build consistent. So I did, and it definitely looks better. So thanks guys. Another thing was, a lot of people were concerned about dust entering the case because I didn't use the foam strips that came supplied. But after three weeks of use without the foam strips, I was surprised to only see a little amount of dust inside. Most of it was on a glass panel and everywhere else seemed to be okay. So potentially, you could get away with not using the foam strips at all. That's if you don't mind removing the side panels after a few months to get rid of the dust. But in the end, I decided to use the foam strips, mainly to compare what the thermals are like, with or without the strips on. We'll talk more about that in just a bit. And lastly, some of you guys noticed I had the top two case fans as intakes in the build video. They were supposed to be used as an exhaust, but at the time of the build, I guess I wasn't paying attention. However, I did test the thermals with them being as intakes, and I can safely recommend not to have them as intakes, as the CPU and GPU temperatures rose up to 90 degrees while playing games. So as intakes, that's a definite no-no. Okay, next, let's go through a few different configurations I've made for this case, and see what the thermals are like. Our first test is playing Fortnite on Ultra Settings. In the first setup, I've got the inside of the case configured to be using a CPU cooler by Deepcool called Gabriel. I replaced the fan that came with it with one of Thermaltake's Ring Plus fans to keep the colour theme of the build consistent. And for the exhaust, the top two fans are also Thermaltake's Ring Plus fans. The CPU temperatures reached around 60 degrees Celsius, whereas the GPU temps were consistently around 67 degrees. These are pretty good temperatures for a case this size. But bear in mind, I wasn't using the foam strips in this setup, so there was a generous amount of ventilation all around the case. However, I did add the foam strips in the next setup, and unsurprisingly, the temps went up. Only by 2 degrees, so that's not too bad. At the bottom of the case, you can fit a 15mm case fan. So now, in setup 3, I have an intake fan. I decided to buy a cheap one from Amazon. It cost around 6 UK pounds by a brand called Akasa, and just by adding an intake fan, is taking the CPU temps down by 4 degrees and 2 degrees for the GPU. And so far, by looking at these temps, it's not much of a change to be honest. The minute differences is hardly worth the effort. But if you want the inside of the PC case to be dust free, it might be worth thinking about. So, in the fourth setup, I swapped out the Akasa intake fan because it started to rattle against the case each time the speeds went over 50%. So, instead, I decided to use the fan from the Gabriel CPU cooler by Deepcool because it looks well built and most likely more stable than the cheap Akasa fan I used. It's slightly taller in height compared to the Akasa fan and it only just about managed to fit in the Ophion case as long as you loosen the PSU cable to make room for it. It would have been better if Rajantech had just designed the case to be a bit taller in height in order to fit a normal case fan. But anyway, with the deep cool fan installed as an intake, I've managed to get the CPU temps down by 1 degree Celsius and the GPU by 2. Yeah, I know, the changes are very minimal, but if we look back to the first setup, we've managed to keep the CPU and GPU cooler by a few degrees, even with the foam strips installed, and at least it keeps the dust out. Lastly, in the fifth setup, I wanted to copy the fan configuration that Rajantech had used in their marketing material to promote the Ophion. I thought it looked really cool, so I swapped out all the case fans and CPU cooler for a set of Rajantech's Iris case fans for the exhaust. And for the CPU cooler, the Juno Pro RBW, an all-in-one heatsink and fan. And boy, was I surprised. The CPU temps went up by 21 degrees Celsius, with the GPU only going up by 3 degrees. Clearly, there's an issue with the CPU cooler, as it's not sufficient at keeping the CPU cool, which is a shame because I really like the way it looks. 
And if you're curious about the temps for the other games, here's the test I did for PUBG. And for Battlefield. Take a moment to pause the video to look at the stats for each game. Let me know what you think about them. So, is the Ryzen Tech Ophion cool on the inside as it is on the outside? Personally, I think it is. With the right configuration, as we have seen in Setup 4, the temperatures are actually good for a case this compact in size. The inside's well designed, and the outer aesthetic looks great. But leave a comment below on what you guys think of the Ryzen Tech Ophion. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. And as usual guys, like this video if you liked it, share it with a friend who might also like it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and all the parts featured in this review will be links down below. Thanks for watching guys, I'm Annie Django, and I'll see you in the next video.